on YouTube. Fantastic. Awesome. Good. I hope you guys are ready. Um, this is definitely going to be a place where if you have the ability to take notes or to write some of this stuff down, I think you're going to be really well served. Like, I really do believe that. Um, great. So we're live on YouTube. We're live on Facebook. Okay. So as we want to start on our bigger official lives, so the bigger audience, the bigger community, um, let's start with what we call the simultaneous squeeze for those on YouTube. So how you do the simultaneous squeeze is you're going to take a deep breath in all through your mouth. doesn't matter because we're just trying to fill up our lungs really fast. Then you can take an extra sip of air at the top because you can always fill your lungs up a little bit more than you think. And then you're going to take the air in your mouth and you're going to kind of squeeze all that air in your core. And you're going to do something like trying to whistle. You know how when people whistle and they make those big, you know, they whistle through their fingers. You've seen that like coaches do it on the field or people who own dogs will do it to whistle to their dog. They usually put their fingers right up to their lips and they're exhaling a lot of air from their mouth and they have to know how to use their diaphragm to squeeze a massive amount of air through their mouth through a very tight little concentric circle through their through their fingertips to be able to make that whistle sound. Now we're going to do something just like that, but the little trick here is that you're not going to let any of the air out of your mouth. Do you think you can do that? We're going to try to push all of the air out of our mouth like we're trying to whistle, but the secret trick here is that you're actually not going to let any air out of your mouth at all, but you're still going to push as if you are. And that's going to cause a Valsalva squeeze or a Valsalva maneuver, and it's going to induce a re massive release of, of acetylcholine up into your vagus nerve and into your brain, and it's going to make you feel really good. Okay? So here we go. If you're clear on everything. So ready? Uh, in three, two, one, deep breath in, and then a little sip. Now push for five seconds or 10 seconds. And when you start to feel dizzy or high, you're going to let that air out just as fast as it came in. You don't want to continue to push it. Once you feel that, that nice kind of head, head rush feeling, you don't need to go any further than that. Okay. So that's all you need to do. Just don't push it more than what you can handle. We especially don't want you completely passing out from this. Okay. So good. Awesome. Um, okay. So now, uh, now what we're going to cover is what the topic of today's video is. And the topic of today's video is, is strength training once you're over 50. So there are a lot of things to consider once your body hits a certain range and an age that are going to make what you do for physical fitness way different than what you do when you're 25 years old or 30 years old. What you do at 30 is going to be substantially different than what you can do at 50. Main thing that we want to keep in mind is when we're 50 is that the, the amount of work required to keep muscles past the age of 50 is pretty much consistent physical movement. So if you develop bad sedentary lifestyle habits in your 30s, 40s, up and in, going into your 50s, that's really going to, that's going to, it's not going to pay off for you very well. You know, it's really going to, it's going to have a, a substantial cost to you. So we want to do what we want to really make sure we're able to do when we're younger. So if you're younger and you're watching this, you're really lucky because you're going to maybe prevent some age related decline. But if you get to 50, what is going to happen is that naturally your muscles, your ligaments, your joints, and your bones and your neurons are all going to deplete in terms of integrity. Integrity meaning the signals going from your brain back to your body and from your body back to your brain, telling you where your feet are when you're walking, when you're navigating your environment, the, the, the communication network is going to slow down and it's going to inhibit your ability to navigate your environment properly. So you typically see you'll start walking slower. You'll be more risk averse. You'll have to hold on to things more. And you know, again, then if you fall at that age, the risk of hurting something or breaking something is more substantial. And then you also deal with the risk factor of 
if you fall and you even if you put your palms out and you catch yourself from falling on your face or anything like that that the injury from a fall the bruising and the soft tissue injury will probably take a lot longer to heal so we need to figure out a couple smart ways to avoid getting into these really bad uh chicken egg situations like is it the strength or is it the avoiding injury aspect and it's a little bit of both you want to be smart you want to exercise of course but exercise past 50 isn't about getting strong you know in the yes in the thumbnail for this video i picked a a, a woman who's probably in her 80s with really big strong muscles and that's awesome and if that's something that you want to do I'm all about that, but for the vast majority of you, like 98% of you, you don't need to go that route, but you do need to maintain strength. So um, so as we get into the older ages, the way that we wanna approach strength and health is a keeping what we have from, we wanna keep what we have. That's the main thing. And we also don't wanna lose what we have those are i think those are two key criteria because now it's not about getting stronger it's kind of like making sure that you don't lose strength and if once you hit 70 the ability for your body to lose and atrophy muscles bones ligaments and nerves can be really fast and very drastic yes so it's about oftentimes it's more about maintaining than it is about trying to become stronger than you than you were in your 40s now some people are made for that some people can do that some people do some people do that and they don't really tell you how they're doing it and typically it comes down to the fact that they're using drugs or hgh or testosterone or hormone therapy so you know be careful of these instagram type of channels that say yeah, I'm like 72 and I'm like super in shape and all that stuff. Like the liver king, for instance. Does anybody remember the liver king? Some guy on Instagram who has these huge muscles, six pack abs constantly. Always talks about, oh, you got to eat, you got to eat meat. You got to eat carnivore. You got to eat paleo. You got to eat what your ancestors ate and you got to be tough. This guy, you know, certainly does work out. But and then people would say, are you on gear? Are you using steroids, Mr. Liver King? And he'd be like, no, I don't believe in steroids. Steroids suck. And then it turns out that somebody, one of his emails was leaked. Um, and it said he was admitting to like using, like, I don't know, six to $10,000 worth of gear per week. Gear meaning steroids, like HG, human growth hormone, testosterone, trenbolone, like hardcore anabolic steroids were going into the liver king. If you don't know who the liver king is, go look him up. It's a very, very funny story. But yeah, so when you're in your 50s and your 60s, be careful of being like wooed into this, I'm going to be stronger at 60 than I was at 50. And that can be true. So, but you want to focus on the fundamentals at that point in time. So main, like Jenny says, maintaining health is about preventing the severe deterioration of your body and avoiding injury because you could be the worst thing that you could do is be like, yeah, I want to be stronger at 60 than I was at 50 is in trying to do that. You might rip a ligament. You might tear a bicep. You might pull a muscle. You might, you might detach an ACL uh, a ligament in your knees. And then what's going to happen at 50 is if you've got a really bad injury like that, a, a, an injury at 50 of that nature, severe neck injury, severe knee injury, or a hip injury is going to put you out of commission for maybe six plus months. And six months of sedentary non-exercise at the age of 60 is going to cause a huge amount of loss of muscle mass, of ligament tissue. And I'm just telling you, you know, this kind of stuff can just happen really fast. So maintaining is about bolstering the strength that you do have, protecting the weakest parts of your body, not looking to be a real, like a ripped, uh, super strong human being, but is, you know, again, locking in your gains, 
protecting what you have, being smart about your exercise, maintaining what you have, and avoiding injury. Uh, so these are the these are the things that you want to look at when you get to your when you get past fifty, you know. And a lot of you, a lot you know, a lot of you watching are probably have gone at some point to go to a uh, like a strength trainer, like you went to a Planet Fitness, you signed up for one of those packages, you were feeling really good, really pumped, and you got a trainer. Now a lot of these trainers are trained to train thirty and twenty year olds, not fifty and sixty year olds, and Honestly, what I've heard, stories I've heard from other trainers and other gyms from all across the country is that some of the stuff that these trainers, these personal trainers do at gyms should be considered malpractice. They are having elderly women jumping up three feet to try and do box jumps or doing squats or deadlifts, putting massive amounts of pressure on their joints, on their knees, on their hips, on their lower back. And this is the kind of stuff that can shear ligaments and and literally destroy bones and cartilage and split discs so you have to be so careful with this kind of approach to your health like really just don't don't be dumb in this case you really have to be careful um so so that's enough to say that we want to do maintenance we want to protect what we've got we want to maintain what we've got and we want to be careful to avoid injury so how do we think about this like so is this do we then do we set a goal here because you know every time anytime you talk about fitness you typically see people say you gotta set a big goal if you want to achieve great things in life right i'm putting in my uh my faux tony robbins voice here you gotta you gotta have big ambitious hairy ass goals in order to to accomplish great things in life and it's like okay well do you want that for your body when you're 50 not really um you want to you want to develop more things like systems and so when it comes to systems systems are a fantastic way to can to keep up the momentum to not lose track and not to lose motivation of why you're doing this in the first place and systems help you really keep track of what you've what you have done in a week and keep reminding yourself that you know truly truly to get kind of good results you don't you don't need to overdo it so with a systems approach i'm going to detail a couple of systems that you could write down here so if you do have the ability to write some some of this stuff down I might really recommend that. Take some notes here because biggest thing with getting someone to do good habits is in the language we use to frame those habits. And what the thing with the tricky thing with with a goal orientation is that a goal at first seems like, oh, well, that's a must. If I want to get six pack abs, that's going to take a lot of work. So I might as well set a big goal for the six pack abs and that'll carry me through till the very end. But it seems we're not, you know, humans aren't very rational thinkers. I don't know if you've noticed. We kind of are very, um, we're more emotional thinkers. Humans are more emotional than we are logical and rational. And so we we pick up goals from an we we emotionally buy things and we logically justify things after the fact so we use goals big goals to get that initial emotional you know that big that nut that bust you know we get that uh that energy from that goal and then we sometimes share that goal with others hey i'm going to get six pack abs and they go yeah you are so you get that dopamine boost from it But that never lasts. And so that's why, how many people do you see in the United States? Look, if it were just as simple as setting a goal, you'd see everybody on planet Earth walking around with six-pack abs. But it just doesn't happen. It just does not work. So something with goals. And then again, what the reason goals can get you in so much trouble, especially when it comes to your health. So let's say like, you know, Jenny or or someone else or Lori or, or Char or Barb or any a number of you. Who are you know 
doing some exercise, obviously taking care of your health to the degree you can, here's what a goal will get you. You, you know what your goal outcome is. You know you have to work backwards from it. You chart, well, I'm going to show up three days a week, four days a week, five times a week to exercise. And what happens with a goal is that you have this, this snapping effect, snapping back effect, where if you stretch a rubber band and you miss a day, you think that the next day you'll make up for the lost day. And if you miss a week of exercise, you're, you're a week further away from your goal. You know, you understand? So that's why you show up to the gym in that bad state thinking, I'm going to work five times as hard today because I missed the lost progress and I really, really am dead set on getting my goal. So I'm going to go and potentially hurt myself and that's where you get injury. So by framing it for someone as a goal, you know, again, this is the, I'm, I'm doing something here that a lot of people don't ever take the time to say, hey, does the goal whole goal thing actually work for people. And what I see time and time again, and you see the results of it too in your life, and you see the results of it in other people's lives around you and your in your community, is that goals around fitness and health uh, really just put people way backwards, you know? It's why people do extreme things with their health, extreme diets, extreme supplementation, things that are really, really unhealthy for their body you cannot, you cannot do that anymore. You're going to put yourself at great risk for bodily harm. So, so what I want you to, to do instead, you know, of course it's great to have a, I think in place of a goal, like a hardcore goal, I want you to think in terms of there's a vision, you know, you have for your body, you have a vision and that vision for your body might be, I want to be able to wake up in the morning and get out of bed and walk around the neighborhood and be able to pick up my grandchildren and be able to enjoy company with my friends and maybe go on a vacation to Europe. Um, that's what a vision of your health could look like. And you can throw a couple of key words in there. Like I want to feel that resilience. I want to feel like I, I can live forever. I want to feel just the, the weightlessness of being. You can throw some of those words into that vision that now takes place of that goal. And you say, I'm going to move in that direction of where that is generally speaking. And then you identify, well, why is that important? Why is it important to be able to be mobile, to be able to walk, to be able to take care of myself? That is a, that is a reason why having a, a nice body is important. You want to identify like, what are the reasons why I want my body to be healthy? Why do I want my body to be tough to take on challenges. You know, if, if your you know, if your big life vision is that you want to be an American gladiator or you want to be a UFC fighter, but if you're 50, you know, sometimes you gotta, you gotta recognize that there are some things that at certain ages, your body just is not going to be able to do anymore. And no matter how much you want a goal, it's just not gonna, it's not going to happen. You know, like, Somebody who is 62 years old should not be playing basketball, okay? Because the risk of rolling your ankle in basketball at 62 is extremely high and you can very much hurt yourself. So you do not want to get into that kind of a situation. That's very, very dangerous. Um, so for from a systems perspective, let's talk about a couple things. What are some of the biggest systems in the context of your body from an exercise perspective, from bone and muscle strength, that is important. Um, in the chat, guess at some of them, right? So if we're thinking about your body and your health and keeping that strong, what are some systems that you might present or some activities that you might present that we can start to build into a system? So I want you to type in the chat right now, just let's, let's have this be a little participative. I don't think we have a, a, a massive audience for today, um, but you know we know I, we do have some people participating. So write in the chat what are some activities that are good for developing strength and resilience in the body. What are some things that you do? What are some things that you like to do? Is that walking, swimming, stretching, yoga? 
um, lifting weights, running, uh, doing any type of cardio, hiking, any of those things? What do, you, what do you personally like to do? Put that in the chat. I'll give you a few moments to, to type that in. Um, good. Okay, so sharp. So light weights. So lifting weights that are light. I like that you added that in there. That's good. So lifting light weights. Now, so let's, let's, let's consider light weight lifting as, oh, and then keep on typing in some other things. Like, is it also walking? Okay, we got recumbent bike from Jenny. That's good. So recumbent bicycle, that's awesome. Light weights as well. Um, swimming, any swimmers? Anybody Anybody playing tennis? Anybody doing, I don't know, fly fishing or, or aerobatics? Or is that right? Aer aerobics? Um, acrobatics? Um, walking, that's a good one too. Okay, good. So let's take, let's kind of take these things and systematize them. So we want to, we want to block these out into systems. So for, so, so what I see here is the potential for two separate systems or just one system. So when we think about light weights, we're talking about physical, stationary lifting of weights to strengthen just muscles in the body. When we lift a weight, we're just trying to keep our heart rate low and just strengthen and focus on, on uh, simple or complex muscular movements. Then we will look at something like a recumbent bikes, bicycle or walking. We're looking at things that are more cardiovascular related. So there's a potential you see there for two kind of separate systems. And I might encourage you to think of these as maybe two separate systems potentially. It just depends. Um, so one, let's start with the first one from Char. So light weights. There's a, that's a, that is a task. That is an, that is an action item that you do. And we want to stick that into a system. So what you want to write down is the word system or just the letter S at the top. And then I'm going to type this out here in the chat too. Um, system colon strengthen my muscles. Um, so strengthen my muscles to keep my body upright and strong okay so we're going to write down that as a system strengthen my muscles to keep my body upright and strong so when you think of what are you going to do today you don't have to think first of well i'm gonna am i gonna do weightlifting? am i gonna do jumping jacks am i gonna do push-ups Am I going to go to the gym? Am I going to stay home? Am I going to do VR boxing? Whatever it is, you want to first think in terms of, well, what are the systems that I should show up for? Because when you focus on systems, you don't put yourself in that potentially very costly setup where you're thinking about your goal. You know, everything's think of your goals and do your goals. No, you shouldn't think about goals at all. Goals should be thought of as in terms of a vision once in a blue moon. And then you should go, great, I've got a couple things that are optional because, you know, what you can do in that system can grow over time. You can you can find favorite things you do. You know, I had I had a friend back when I was living in Silicon Valley and he was a kind of guy who just didn't like to exercise. And I really didn't understand it because we were living in this this 10 million dollar mansion um, in the hills overlooking Silicon Valley. I'm talking about a, it's a $10 million mansion, nine bedroom, nine bath with its own garage and its own gym with a Smith machine that costs about $10,000. So any kind of, you know, I was in there every day, you know, this is 2019. I was in there. I was in, I was using the gym every day. Um, and I, I was like, Hey man, like you have all of this stuff. You're definitely, he's in his fifties. You're older than me. Why don't you exercise? And also your diet isn't like, your diet's not great. What, I mean, what's up? And he's like, you know what? Back in the nineties, he was one of these like nineties internet entrepreneur guys. You know, you find a lot of those in the, in the Bay area. Um, and he said, you know, back then in the nineties, I had the option to get one of those really expensive Nautilus machines, you know? Does anybody know a Nautilus? You've probably heard of it. It's like one of those like 
weird gymnastic looking wacky contraptions, you know, built by some inventor who's like, I found the secret to working out for 30 seconds a day. And you just got to, you know, something called the Nautilus, which is a, again, a $12,000. You just do three minutes on this, this thing and it strengthens your whole body. It's the kind of thing that like Tony Robbins would buy and put on his, you know, put on his, uh, his tour bus so that he could get what one worth one hour's worth of exercise and in three minutes, you know, and so he's like, you know, what? I got one of those and I used it once and I just hated it. And so I decided there then and there that I just never would exercise. I just decided I wasn't going to exercise. And I was like, okay. I'm like, well, you're, you're, I'm just thinking in my head. I'm like, you are 50. You've made it this far. And this is the exact type of age where those those decisions are going to start to catch up with you. And also diet wise from his from what he was eating, you know, it's like fried food, ice cream, sushi. Sushi was the one good thing the guy ate. You know, so I would always order a sushi. I, this is the guy that was funding the whole fucking lab, so I had to keep his his ass healthy. I'm like, I'm not going to let you fall over from a heart attack anytime soon. So I'm buying you whatever the best type of food that you can get down your mouth. I'm going to buy that for you. So I would buy sushi dinners like every other night for this whole house. And that was expensive, but it was a good investment to keep the, you know, the CEO of that specific mansion kicking long enough. And, um, you know, cut to today, his health, you know, 2023, it's not doing great. I'll just tell you that, you know, but it is what it is, right? We, we all make decisions. We all have systems that we follow or we don't. And I don't know why in his mind, he just went, I just don't want to exercise. And I was like, okay, you know, sometimes when somebody makes that firm of a decision, you can just go, okay, you know, I'm I. some people look, what do they say? You know, I work in, I work in sales. So, you know, oftentimes if somebody's trying to decide if they want to come on work with me in terms of as a client and use ultrasound and do VNS and, you know, have access to kind of our, our, our large wheelhouse of resources, there's always a sales process. And one thing we, we learn, you know, one thing I learned back in my twenties, especially having to do, you know, negotiation and sales and all that kind of stuff then is there's the idea of like sell or be sold and sell or be sold means that anybody some people are ready to buy, but they're really good at giving you excuses why they can't buy. Oh, it's just not the right time. Or what would my wife think? Or, you know, I'm just not sure. I don't know my fan finances or whatever. And it's like, you know, if you're willing to negotiate, you can always find something that fits. Um, but some people, you know, again, some people can be better salespeople than another person. And for me, like I talked about yesterday, remember we talked about you can be you can be the one that you can be the biggest expert in just supplements in the world and still get piss poor results for person for a person if you lack other corollary skill sets so for me personally from a from a health perspective as a health coach i would rather be only 60% proficient in understanding how supplements affect someone but also be 65% proficient in understanding how their physical neck can compress their vagus nerve and how to fix that. And then also being 60% proficient in utilizing VNS technology. Now, you know, to be fair, I'm probably 89% proficient in doing VNS technology. So I, I have a couple of corollary nice skills that complement each other really well. That's why I'm able to get such good results for clients. Um, so I don't necessarily look at convincing someone of that they should you know, how do you convince someone who is so dead set on selling you their excuses when I don't need to be the best salesperson on the planet to be able to get results? And oftentimes your your diehard dogmatic salesmanship of selling others on your excuses for why not is only just going to end up costing you a lot more money in the long run than you think. So be very careful about trying to be the best salesperson to convince others of why, you know, why making a decision that's good for you, for your health, 
is actually something that you don't want to do because not everybody is going to be for me to convince him would have taken hours of work and 99% proficiency at sales. You know, he's a good bullshitter. He knows how to see through a sales tactic. Um, and I'm just not, I'm not up to snuff. I'm not, I'm not the kind of salesperson who could sit there and convince someone who for the last 25 years has convinced himself that he doesn't need to exercise and that he can just eat fried fish sticks and chocolate ice cream every day. You know, like my skill set, I, I'm lucky, you know, I don't, I made a decision a long time ago because at one time, so back in 2021, as I'm growing my coaching business, I started hiring out for different sales roles and I hired one guy who was way almost overqualified. I'd say I'd put him at a 93% sales skillsmanship, but like 10% at understanding health and 10% at understanding like interpersonal niceties. And he was just very blunt. Like he was like, he would have been good at selling you a car or a, a sports card or memorabilia or antiques. He was 93% proficient at it. And guess what? He was a really bad fit for the way that I work because he was overselling people to make decisions where they weren't even convinced that they needed it themselves. So you see like a lot of the, a lot of the times when I get on a sales calls with someone, to like talk to them like, hey, how's your vagus nerve doing? What are your symptoms? What have you tried? What would you like to try? What would that look like? What would that change for you? How, what's, what have been some of the difficulties? What can we do to overcome that? And they give me all that information. And I say, great, I think I can help you. Here's how it would look. And I just am straight up like, here's, here's what that all looks like. Does this sound like something you wanna do or not? You let me know and if you do, we'll take care of it and we'll get you started. It's really simple. I'd say I take a very hands-off approach from a sales perspective. Um, and I'm very op you know, upfront and open and, and very transparent in that process. Um, so I'm, I'm like only 65% proficient at sales. I suck at sales. You guys know that. Do I, do I look like I'm a good salesperson? I'm, I'm, I'm not even on script right now. I'm fucking up already. <laughs> Cause I'll go off on a tangent talking about this mansion I lived in in Silicon Valley. So, you know, again, I, but again, can I get good results for people when it comes to their health, which is what I really think matters? Yes. Will I be able to sell everybody on the planet about what I do? Absolutely not. Not at all. No, not at all. And I never will. And I never want to because, again, I mean, we're, I'm already at basically close to capacity in terms of how many clients I can take on. So that's that it is what it is, what it is right? So anyway, my 50-year-old friend, he decided that, you know, for whatever reason, he didn't want to exercise. And I just was like, okay, I'm not going to, my skill set to convince you is going to be exhausted on this. When I know that there are other people who are already 98% of the way there. And if I could just give them a clear picture of what those systems are, they're ready to freaking go. So, you know, my apologies to my friend, but I want to help those who are like, already there and they just need that little like that little bit of umph to get there to see it clearly to kind of know that they're going to do something that's not going to hurt them too because i think that's the other thing is you want to do this without hurting yourself so so again so looking back at that word that sentence i wrote system strengthen my muscles to keep my body upright and strong keeping my let's break down what that means strengthening my muscles your muscles are the more your muscles are the thing that you can control for the most. Would you agree or disagree? Because like, look, you have bones, right? But what what thing can you do other than going on a rack or getting like some expensive surgery? What kind of exercises can you do to tightly control the strength of your bones? Now I get, you know, you can go, you can take supplements for bone health, but is that a quick or a slow process? A very slow process. Now, what about your ligaments? If you have ligament degeneration, are there some things you can do to strengthen your ligaments? Yeah, you can supplement with collagen. I would recommend you take collagen peptides every single day. You take a big heaping scoop of collagen peptides if you're having any joint pain. That kind of stuff can help so much. But ligaments can take a lot of time to 
become stronger and to balance out if you have issues. If you let your ligaments go, you can have tightness that isn't relieved for years. So ligaments can take a lot of time. Your neurons can grow rather quickly, but it's never a super clear thing. The one thing that I've seen able to grow so freaking fast are muscles. Muscles, yeah. You know, you see people who do a little bit of work on their shoulders. You know, they take a, a, a dumbbell and they, they do a shoulder press. You can start to see their muscles right here start to grow. You can see the definition. You can see in my neck. Today I did iron neck today. You can see definition in my jawline and my neck because I did iron neck for maybe five minutes. That was it. For those wondering, that's an, that's what an iron neck looks like. It's it's a it's a cool thing. I'll type it in the chat. Iron neck. Look it up later. Um, your muscles are so much more under your own control than any of these other things that specialists, doctors, or influencers are trying to get you to focus on. And they want you to focus on your bones, you know, your joints, these kinds of things. Now, you know, don't don't mess up your bones and don't mess up your joints. But the only thing that you have that really tight feedback loop control over are muscles. It's muscular strength. And there's muscles in your neck, muscles in your legs, muscles in your core, in your back, your arms, your feet, your calves, all over your body that can be strengthened and maintained very easily. Just with a little bit of walking, a little bit of weight training, and that's it, right? So again, go back to that system that I wrote. Strengthen my muscles to keep my body upright so I can sit and stand up straight. That's a big one. If you can't maintain posture and you're slinking down, it doesn't mean that you didn't have, you know, your grandma didn't yell at you enough to stand up straight at the table. That's not why. It's because the muscles in your neck and your back are really weak. And no amount of chiropractic or acupuncture or NUCA or Atlas Orthogonal is gonna fix that. The only thing that's gonna fix your ability to stand up straight is you strengthening the muscles in your neck. And for instance, we talked about this yesterday. We talked about the red ball exercises. We have a, we have a free PDF that you can do at home. Um, I'll put it in the chat here again, since we're on the subject right? Red ball neck strengthening PDF download link. You can strengthen your postural muscles easily a few times a week with those exercises. It's super easy, super, super easy. And then also, how are you perceived in your 50s, 60s, and 70s if your posture has fallen? What do other people perceive you on top of having gray hairs, saggy skin, like just a deterioration of energy combined with this. How do you perceive, when I just go like, if I were on camera like this, you guys, hey, what's up? Hey, hey, hi. How do you perceive me with my neck up versus down, okay? And I do this because I strengthen the, the muscles in my neck, right? You look old you look so like and it's it's subtle this is young this is old it's just such a tiny little difference and rather than buying those devices that you clip on your necklace and that tell you know beep when you're slouching just strengthen the dang muscles in your god darn neck it is so easy to do and it fits right within that system doesn't it if I say, you know, I have no goals for you, for your for your body, other than directionally that you'll live forever and you'll maintain good postural health and muscle health forever. That's it. It's just that that's the game. Not a game of making it's not even a get to a hundred, because when you get to a hundred, you go, well, now what? You just say, just continue to live and thrive and be happy and healthy and fulfilled. That's really the key. That's the key to happiness you know, just dropping that on you. Boom. That's the key to happiness is being fulfilled, having good posture, feeling energy in your muscles, having your head held up high, because that makes a big difference for you. 
and not again, you know, if you if your posture collapses, not only socially do people kind of feel aversion like ugh, to you, they also look at your weak ass neck and they go, man, why would I put my life on the line for that person if it looks like some some little twinky little 13 year old kid could push him over and they would fall over and and die because their neck would snap. Who wants to be around that? I'm just being like, I'm being as honest with you as possible. This may sound extremely vicious and brutal, but who wants to put you as a weak, low posture, low energy, pencil neck person anywhere in their vicinity? No, I'm like, I'm sorry, hon, but like step, step the F back away from me because this is my circle of control. What I have in the in the six feet around me is my defensive situation. And I'm certainly not going to make, I'm not going to depend on someone with a weak ass neck who looks like, look again, you live in a, not to get political here, but you live in a city, you walk around a town. There are kids today who have a game called the knockout game, okay? So if you are thinking to yourself, I don't need to exercise. I don't need to develop strength. My neck can be as weak as fuck. I don't care. I'll just keep on going for chiropractic visits and that makes me feel okay or whatever. No, you're gonna. there's going to be a knockout game coming to your town in the near future. I can guarantee it. And some kid is going to bash you over the head, hit you in the chest. I've seen videos all over the internet of just crazed people pushing old women down on the street. So you better be careful. You better take this kind of thing very, very seriously. Oh, I'm getting some messages here on the on the old Facebooks. Thanks you thank you. So yeah, I mean, look, why do we take that system seriously of keeping your strength upright? Is because the purpose is because you could die by just having a weak neck. Just a weak neck a weak neck plus the quotient of time and that you're a standing human being can result in X, Y, Z. I want to tell you a story about a client that we had uh, recently rejoin our phase two program. Now she went through phase one starting back in 2021, I believe, successfully went through the program, successfully developed a systematic process and a habit of neck strengthening every single week. She's been doing that for over 18 months. Her neck looks fantastic. She was walking down at school. She hit a patch of grass. She lost her footing and she did fall over because that's something that can happen. Even I'm at risk of falling over. You know, you, you, you hit something, you fall, whatever it happens. So you can't prevent yourself from falling, but you can prevent yourself from a fall becoming a death sentence. And for her, I asked her, she's like, oh my God, I fell. And I was like, how did your neck hold up? And she's like, I was able to hold my whole head and neck up and keep it with all that force, it would have slammed right into the sidewalk and she would have smashed and broken the orbital in her face. It was that much of an impact, but she was able to hold her, her head up and not smash her face into the ground. Um, and so, you know, I'm like, dang, you know, you got that, you got that toughness in your body, in your neck, in your posture. I want you in my circle. Okay. I want you, you're, you're, I will, I will get your back. You'll get my back. Okay. Cause if you can take a fall like that and it, at the age of 50, and that's not going to severely dislocate or sever a nerve in your body, then you're tough. You're built tough. And I want that. I don't want weak weeks. I don't want the weak stuff. Okay. Um, you know, we got to look the, the line the the Moses line in the sand, the line in the, in the red sea is parting. And you're either going to be on team, I'm going to be, I'm team strong systems versus team goal, sit on my ass because I didn't get my goals and I just felt so, I had a pity party because I didn't get my goals. Oh God. You're on one side or you're on the other side. Team systems, team strong systems, let's go forward, okay? So strong systems. Yeah, this is, Jenny, you got it exactly. Deconditioning can happen with a sedentary lifestyle. Exactly. So you got to make a commitment. You do, you do still have, at the end of the day, 
there's still some effort here. There's still some commitment. You can't make excuses anymore. Hopefully me sharing some of these reasons. Yeah. And that's a fear-based reason, but it's, I'm not wrong. I'm certainly not wrong. If I were getting, if I feel at my age in my strength, that if some band of kids walked up to me, I could at least hold my own or at least get the heck out of there as fast as I could. Um, these are just the facts, folks. I want you to be, I'm, I'm trying to make an army of resilient freaking people, not, not weak people. Okay. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's this saying, there's this old saying about, you know, strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times. Hard times create strong men and strong men create good times again. We are absolutely entering into the weak men creating very bad times. And I want you to be your, your fittest. I want you to be freaking strong. Okay. So, so first we've got the first system, strengthen your body so you can stay upright and strong, right? I'm going to put that in there again, right? Maybe a little bit redundant. Maybe it needs to be shopped around a little bit. You can kind of rework it and rewrite it, but that should be what you block out in the morning, uh, five days a week, write a circle, write a, write a rectangle on your calendar and write, you write the way I do it. Shorthand is an S colon strengthen my muscles to keep my body upright. And maybe we'll say resilient could change it like that little on the fly modifications never hurt. Now that feels a way better to read than do my recumbent bike. Do you feel that there's a difference energetically between strengthen my muscles to keep my body upright and resilient? Cause I'm a warrior. i almost want to continue on. I'm an Amazonian warrior person. I'm going to crush. I'm going to crush it. You know, the system lends itself to the juicing up of that system. So on your calendar, five days a week, you block out a one hour of time to maybe do your hour of power and to do whatever else you need to do. Maybe that's, maybe that is going on your recumbent bike. Maybe that's lifting some weights. Maybe that's running a little bit. You know, there's lots of things that can be done here to make you to be in alignment with that system. Okay. So that's one form of the system or one form of a, of a health and body based exercise system. Remember, just so you guys know, we are trying to espouse any goal based thinking here. There is no goal at all. You just continue to show up for these systems and you'll live a long, healthy life. That's it. It's really very, very simple. So another system, let's talk about what walking and cardio can be. So walking and cardio can be, um, let's see. Um, I would, I, I'm just, you know, this is where you get to be a little bit creative. You know, you get to be a little bit riff, riffy a little bit. Um, my, um, make my blood pump throughout my whole body for richly oxygenated cells. Okay. Good. Okay. So you see what I wrote there? That's a pretty good system title and that can encompass more things than just walking or doing my bicycle or even doing a red light therapy session because red light, because look, when we start to expand our umbrella, around more of our systems of more round of our, of our tasks and our activities, it becomes a lot easier. You're, you're thinking about a lot less, but doing a lot more. You're doing more for your body by thinking it, thinking about it like that than thinking about it like, Oh, I had to do this and this and this and this. When you start to overwhelm your brain with a hundred items of just exercise and we haven't even gotten into taking your supplements, eating healthy, all, those are those are those can be mind-bogglingly complicated tasks to do and those can take their own systems but right now we're just working on like two two systems that you can kind of start in a fun way showing up for more often and try it on 
you know, for what I'm telling you is you don't have to ex you don't have to accept it at face value and say, well, this guy Sterling because of babble theory is just talking and he must know what he's talking about because he can talk for an hour about the subject and not have to check his notes. He's clearly done this before. This is not the first time he's had this kind of a conversation. So yeah, I probably do know a thing or two about what I'm talking about. I do work with a lot of people and we do a lot of coaching and we do help people build systems around their health with good results and fun results. You know, it's not a slog. It's not difficult. It's, it's fun. It makes it like, wow, I feel like I can do the same amount of work and enjoy the work that I've been doing already. So that's what the systems do. Why would you want to suffer so much when you could do the same amount of work, get better results and have more fun? That's the key. So it's more fun to wake up in the morning and go, what do I have on my agenda today? And to say, ooh, I'm going to make my blood pump through my whole body for richly oxygenated cells. And I know that that's important because the research shows that the more oxygen pumps into my cells, the more robust they are, the more they can detox, the more energy I have, and the more brain power I have, right? So you immediately know what the reason behind oxygenating your cells. And then when you look deeper, you know, you zoom in on that system, you say, oh, well, I can do today, I could do 10 minutes of walking outside. I could do some, I could do my hour of power on the headphones that Sterling provided, you know, with the, the hour of power stuff that we do here, you could do that. And would doing the hour of power just as easily fulfill the system that walking would do or being on the recumbent bike would do or even running? Running would be a good way to pump your blood. You could go into a, a sauna, potentially, doing a session in a really hot sauna where you're sweating would be another way to make your blood pump through your whole body for richly oxygenated cells. Wim Hof breathing could also do that. So, so there's a way to get away with this pumping of your blood through more cardio activity um, to make it work from a systems perspective. You guys see that? So just let me know. Um, type a yes in the chat if the system, the way that I wrote the system, makes you feel a little bit more pulled to doing exercise than just writing something like walking or lifting weights, right? Would, so if, if you write yes in the chat, if the way that I wrote the system has something energetically that juices you up a little bit more than just saying walking, not like I'm, I'm not poo pooing on walking. Don't get me wrong here. Walking is important. You should be walking. And that's probably what maybe when you get to 102, walking may be one of the only things you can practically really do. So I'm not poo-pooing it. So Char, you're, you're a yes. So looking at the, the systems approach, breaking it down to it's not just about the tasks, it's about the systems, the purpose, and the vision direction of where we want to go that really makes the difference for doing this. And that is ultimately how you can stay fit after 50 because you're no longer, because you, if you look, if you did just those two things from a health perspective, if you, if you did exercises that specifically strengthened your muscles, if you did the red ball exercises, or you got an iron neck system and you strengthened the muscles in your head and neck. So you had more control and support here. And you started strengthening your calf muscles and your leg muscles and your core muscles. Like you could have really maybe some strength in your hands, right? Let's think of the couple things in your body that really ultimately need to be strong. I think your neck needs to be strong. I think your grip and your hands needs to be strong. I also think your, your, your core, you know, doing core workouts needs to be strong. And then I also think your ability to walk needs to be strong. Now notice I never said that your shoulders and your biceps have to be really big or that you have to have six pack abs. Man, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even care if you had, I don't care if someone has six pack abs. That makes almost zero difference to anything. I care like if they are tripping and falling, can they grab onto something without being able to let go? Your grip strength is a big determination of your health long-term. Agree or disagree? Agree, definitely. We know that as you get more cognitive decline, 
that you lose grip strength. Grip strength is one of the very first things that goes in the case of early onset Alzheimer's disease. So are there specific little tools that you can get on Amazon called the mandrel set? With a, It's a five-part kit where you can squeeze and pull your fingers open with rubber bands and strengthen your grip. And I've definitely talked about that kind of stuff. We do that in our coaching program all the time. Can, there, can, you, can you easily strengthen your neck with a $20 red ball at home? Yes, absolutely. Can you easily strengthen your, your, your core? Can you strengthen your legs? Yes. And you do these from a systems perspective. And then can you get cardio by walking, by doing the hour of power for 20 minutes a day? If you did the hour of power for 20 minutes a day, it would be like, boom, you got your heart rate pumping. And you not only got your heart rate pumping, but you got your, your spiritual centers pumping. You got your mindset pumping too. So you can do combinations of things. Some things you'll find when we look at a higher purpose almost, you can be like, well, I could walk or I could do hour of power and walking at the same time. And you get both of them out of the way. So you're like, I showed up even better for that system and I feel better about it. But even then, even if you, even if the battery on your headset died, you know, cause like you gotta have this plugged in for it to work. Some days I for, admittedly forget to plug this back in and I go, oh boy, oh boy, I'm gonna do my hour of power. And I put it on and I'm like, I turn it on and I'm like, oh shoot, I forgot to charge it, okay? So then I'll take it and I'll plug it in immediately. And then I'll go, okay, cool. Well, I still should walk. So I still go outside and I do my walk. And maybe it's not as, as, in, as, as you know, hour of powery as I wanted, but it still really does hit the, hit the spot for me. From that perspective of that system of making my blood pump throughout my whole body for richly oxygenated cells. Because we know the benefit of that. We know scientifically that you have to have blood pumping you have to have a high VO2 max. You have to have good cardio. If you stop walking because you're sedentary at the age of 50, 60, 70, um, just going to be frank with you, death is very much around the corner for you. It's just a fact, right? This kind of stuff is so important. Um, yeah, and Je Jenny, you have it exactly. So seeing results from exercising is an incentive to continue. And yeah, I mean, and when you break it up into smaller little pieces, like, it's just like, look, you know, I'm going to walk a couple, I'm going to walk every day. I'm going to lift up some weights. I'm going to do my recombinant, recombinant bike. And if you did, if you did either of those systems, you could ask yourself week by week, do I feel like I'm able to strengthen my muscles to keep my body upright and resilient? Do I feel like I'm able to do that better this week versus last week? If you were doing the next stuff, like for Shar, for instance, she said it herself. Her neck pain has almost gone away completely since starting the Red Ball uh, exercises. So again, these are all part of categories of improvement. This is your body we're talking about. This is your health. This is your temple. And so if you do it like this, you can see some tangible improvements. And that's all you really need to keep track of. And that's why looking at it from a systems perspective is so beneficial versus a goal perspective. Because if you always focus on the goal, you never, you almost never notice how much closer you have gotten to your, to, to the goal. Because the goal, it's just a, it's a weird optical illusion with goals. So I say, get rid of the goals, screw the goals, drop all the goals. Um, just focus on the systems. That's all you need to do. And this is a really beautiful way to approach things because what you can start to do now is apply this systems approach to multiple areas of your life for more things in your health. You might say something like system in the morning to hydrate and um, f fill my body with the best nutrients possible so that I can go through my day with the best fuel and, and fluids that I need to get stuff done. That's called systems design. You wanna think like that. So that's easy. And then you open up your document and you go, well, I've got to add lemon water. I've got to add magnesium. I've got to add NAC, collagen, whatever. But you don't get overwhelmed by looking at your day through all the small tasks. You get super juiced up by looking at like maybe four or five major systems that you're going to show up for that day. And if you only show up for like, if you only walk for 30 seconds from a systems perspective, you go, you know what? I checked the box. I showed up for that system. I couldn't do the full thing, 
but that doesn't matter because I showed up for it. And that's how a system works. A system works because you show up for it consistently. That's how systems sustain long-term growth. Goals, on the other hand, if you only show up for 30 seconds, you beat yourself up over the head because you didn't do it fully. And now you're behind and now you're playing catch up and now you're stressing yourself out about it. And then you don't start, then you start, then you start to not show up for it because you only feel bad emotions about it, right? You see how that all works? So goals have to be dropped. Um, so anyway, so anyway, I want to move on. Thanks so much, Laura, as well for, you know, for sharing that, that insight on the video. I, I'm trying to work on it. Trust me. I'm trying to figure out the whole video thing. But lastly, 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 I just want to talk about a little bit recovery for if you are strengthening your body and you do notice some issues. I'm going to share with you a protocol called MEAT. And I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk about what that means. I'm going to put it in the, in the chat. So MEAT is a protocol that you use if you've overdone it and you feel like you, you know, maybe strained or pulled something or you, you worked a little bit harder than your body was ready for, which is totally natural even if you start something, especially when you start a new practice. You might walk a little bit more. You might feel a little bit more fatigued. You might feel a little bit, you know, your neck might feel a bit tighter from doing neck strengthening. Um, nothing wrong with that, but we want to know, like, how do we rehabilitate this kind of thing? So the, it's called the MEAT protocol. So I'm going to write this in the chat. Mobilize, exercise, analgesic, and therapy. Okay. So I'm putting that in the chat in here on Facebook and on YouTube. So you can, you know, at least have that as a note. Okay. So what MEAT is, is mobilizing. So if you have, let's say you have a neck injury, you did red ball, you did it a little bit too many times per week. You were a little bit over amped and you did it too much. Mobilization is you, let's say you have a, a crink in your neck. Mobilization means you're going to actually like start kind of moving your head and neck and kind of rotating your head around and trying to find what your range of motion is. You're actually going to try to intentionally go up against the limit of where this starts to hurt and try to find it, you know, like, oh, are you there or are you here? Are you there or are you here? Where do I feel it? Can I stretch away from the opposite end? That's what mobilization is. So you 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 put a specific time right in the calendar and you say it's time for MEAT, for meat, for mobilization. Then once you kind of find that and you feel like you got the stretch out, then you're actually going to go and strengthen it. You're actually going to do exercises. So you can do like resistance. You can kind of put your hand here and start to kind of like strain those muscles to exercise. So you would do the red ball again if you actually hurt yourself with the red ball after you mobilize, okay? It seems counterintuitive, but what you're really doing is you're strengthening and, and, and ex expediting the repair process that needs to happen. And this is, this applies to everything. So like if you, if you kind of roll your ankle and you, it's, it hurts to walk on a foot, the worst thing you can do is to just lay up in bed for a week while you recover, you know, resting your leg, your foot is a bad idea. What we know now is that you want to be on that foot the next day, walking as soon as possible to try to, to try to tell your body that it needs to start getting in the habit of actually making these muscles work again. Um, so you need to exercise again. If you have a foot injury, you need to try to walk on it if you can. Okay. You need to put some weight on it. Then after that, then you do analgesics. Analgesics are anti-inflammatories. Um, topical rubs could be Arnica, could be Zyphlamin, could be natural things, could be pharmaceutical things, whatever it is, anything that can help reduce the pain that's coming from it is, is a great idea. There are topical tiger bombs, there's biofreeze, there's all kinds of things that you want to minimize the felt pain coming off of a damaged area of the body. Um, and then lastly is therapy. So therapy means that means putting a hot compress on it, doing a massage gun doing, getting a massage, getting chiropractic work, then, then getting acupuncture could be any kind of thing that's therapeutic in nature. Could be, you know, getting a massage could be even using, if, if it's a physical therapy type of thing, having your PT doing a, an ultrasound, um, heat on the area to try and calm it down to, to repair it. Um, and so that's the process it's M E A T mobilize exercise, analgesic and therapy. 
that's what you need to do. You need to get better at recovering from an injury because injuries will probably happen more so at the age of 50. Get really good at bouncing back from an injury. Don't fuck that up. Because like I said, if you if you really hurt yourself and you make one bad choice of, oh, well, I heard on from this Facebook group that if you hurt your your hand, then you shouldn't use it at all for like four months. And I heard that somewhere. That's wrong. That is going to make your hand so much weaker and so much more susceptible to a more severe injury the next time something happens. So you need to be aggressive and you need to push the boundaries of what your body is capable of doing if you're injured. I'm not saying, you know, if you hurt your back, start running, start sprinting down the block. Be reasonable here. But you need to like, Use your body. You need to start stretching. You need to start feeling like, where can I move my body? How can I lift things? How can I do squats? How can I move my neck? What kind of analgesics? What kind of pain relief can I use? And what kind of therapy am I going to apply right now? Heat, ice, whatever, anything. You need to be proactive about this. Because again, two weeks of time off at the age of 50 and up is like a is like a 20 year old taking a year off from going to the gym. It can be, it can add up so fast. You need to be like, okay, you got injured. Cry a little bit if you need to for like 15 minutes. Okay. Then be like, start planning your recovery immediately. Be like, what did Sterling say? Oh, the M E A T protocol. We need to mobilize this. We need to exercise it as fast as possible. We need to start applying analgesics and then doing therapy and getting back out there as fast as possible. And also that means, of course, you know, making sure that the injuries aren't severe. Don't be doing CrossFit. Don't be doing jujitsu. Don't ski. Don't mountain bike. Don't do cross country skiing where if you if you find if there's a little hole and you fall and trip, don't skateboard. Don't ice skate. Don't do don't do dumb shit. Okay? Just be practical here. Walking, hour of power, strengthening your neck, lifting some weights, walking around, going and seeing friends, taking a trip on a plane to somewhere beautiful, going on a nice health retreat to upstate New York in the summer and getting to meet Sterling and all of his team and getting to do ultrasound stimulation in your ear in a meditative center and do that kind of stuff. That should be your focus at this age, you know? Not trying to be some tough girl tough boss lady and getting yourself hurt. Okay. So anyway, um, but yeah, so that's, that's it folks. So that's, that's it. If you, if you paid attention, you took some notes, you've got systems on strength training, increasing blood flow, increasing cardiac strength, um, recovering from an, il from an in illness or an injury very quickly and getting back on the saddle. I hope you have found a lot of benefit from this. And uh, that's going to wrap it up for our YouTube audience. So thanks so much for watching on YouTube. If you like the video, make sure you like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. Um, that helps us not to have to provide, uh, you know, pitches for um, for God knows what, you know, whatever supplements or whatever kind of bullshit there is out there. Okay. So thanks so much, YouTube. I'll see you later.